Hey guys, and welcome to PJ's Queen Capers. So today I wanted to talk about die clashes, and so we will be referring to uh, a die clash in this uh, Renix Australian pre-decimal and decimal coin errors book. And uh, this is a great book because it really helps to explain a lot of the uh, errors that are really substantial errors, along with some of the minor sort of stuff that we would find uh, as we're finding, as we're going through our noodling and th going through coins and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, very helpful book and well worth uh, getting alongside of the uh, the Renix uh, Values Guide. I'll leave a link in the description uh, to where you can buy this book uh in the description of this video all right so in this book and i've just marked a page so i just wanted to give you what this book says in relation to uh well here they've got clashed dies or die clash so just to give an explanation it says here the obverse and reverse dies which have come together in the striking process without a planchet in between so basically the obverse which is the queen, so the head, and the reverse, which is the tail, okay? That's probably just the easy way. So the obverse and the reverse is basically another way of saying the head or the tail. So if that's been something that's been confusing you, just try and think obverse as the head and reverse as the tail. So basically a coin without any detail is called a planchet. So it's blank on both sides. So when the, um, so it says here, without a planchet in between, coins produced thereafter from such a pair of dies usually show mirror image traces of an obverse design on the reverse or reverse design on the obverse. So when the two dies clash, they come together without anything in between. They leave an impression, uh, which then after the, the next coin or planchet comes through, that detail from both of the dies ends up being produced and um, shown on the actual coin. So the reason why I've decided to talk about this today, I'll we'll put this aside, is uh, this past week I've been able to... Well, I've bought, I bought a whole heap of pennies. And so I, ba I basically bought... They're all kangaroo pennies, so uh, they're all these ones. Have, I've I've gone through all of these, okay, and they're basically well from technically from 1938, even though I haven't found any that are that old all the way up to 1964. So I bought 500 of them, and I picked them up fairly cheap, and I thought, ah, oh, it's still good to have these coins uh, and at some stage in the future I will be doing a giveaway and I will be giving away uh, a good number of these coins so these are ones I've gone through and I've still got um, probably a couple hundred in this bag which I thought we could probably start going through some of them together but before that let's just chat a little bit more about die clash and this is this is the reason why actually uh, decided to do this video because look at, at this time I've really only got this one example which is the one that I've shown a number of times on the channel and this one was donated to me so it's been great to be able to be used I'll just try and put a bit more light over here and you can see like almost it looks like whiskers or something uh, coming off the Queen's chin mouth area and that is from the echidna side between the claws that's caused that. So this is what I, exactly what I was talking about and what we just read a moment ago. So right in between the claws there is what the, the impression that we're seeing there. So, and there are some other markings on there as well from other details from the echidna side. So as I was going through uh, probably the first 300 or so, I came across this coin which is a 1943 penny so if I hold it in the right light you will see on the kangaroo side you'll see a let's grab my pointer you'll see the King George's head here okay and this part here is actually like the eye sort of socket area 
and depending on how I hold it you'll see like a chin indentation here and you'll even see the neck details through here and then it comes up here and basically you can see the outline of the obverse side of the coin so that there is clearly a, a die clash error so it's reversed okay so when this would have come together with the other die and um, the impression would have been left up which then when it's struck again the image is reversed so that's what's going on there so i thought okay this is a good opportunity i've got two coins and i like to be able to use real examples of coins that i actually own as often as i possibly can so that's that's what i like to do rather than just showing images but Obviously, the, the, big, the big one we're all trying to find at the moment is the Alien Era one, which is the 2016 five cent changeover coin, which we've also spoken about many times on the channel. But yeah, I thought I'd show you this one. And look, I have no idea how many of these exist. Uh, I'm assuming the numbers are probably fairly high. The, I probably should do some research, but yeah, if you have any idea... If, if you come across this before, many of you uh, know a lot more about uh, our older currency, so our pennies, uh, than I do. So it's just something I'm interested in because they are coins and they are part of Australian history. So therefore, I'm interested in them. But it's something I need to learn a lot more about. But yeah, when I pulled this one out, I thought, yep, that's worth uh, showing you guys. So I figured let's do some noodling we've got the opportunity these are coins i have not gone through so whatever's in here i'm seeing and you're seeing okay so uh how am i going to do this i'm just going to set myself up a little bit differently just hold on all right guys that's better guys that's better so we'll just grab some handfuls and we'll try and just work our way through them actually i might just grab them one at a time and we'll um we'll make sure we rotate them we'll try and we might just zoom in a little bit further so with these this is this is quite nice as well i like these sort of multi-colored coins you can see there's a little bit of detail missing on the one there but it's still a nice coin and 1964 these millions and millions of these are made so it's not not a special coin but if there are anything special we'll put them aside but basically in in the date range of what these coins are really the only one that is special from um, from from my point of view is the 1946 because that's the third lowest mintage so we'll just quickly go through as many of these as we can but they, these ones are in fairly good condition which is nice So eventually I'll go back through these and just look a little bit more as I learn more things over time. I tend to go back through my pennies and sort of find different mint marks and those kind of things. It's always interesting to have a look at all the different details. Say like on this one there's a penny and then it's got a dot which means something. That means it's minted somewhere in particular and I don't know what that is right now. I can look it up. And it's certainly in my Renix uh, guide and it tells me exactly what the mintage is for that coin based on the fact it's got a dot. And uh, sometimes they've got a dot at the start. Um, they've sometimes got an eye for India underneath the, the head side, um, say underneath here. Uh, so all those different things will determine where the coins are made and how many of each of the coins were produced so if you see anything that I'm not seeing on these coins and you, there's something special please let me know because yeah I certainly do not profess to be a professional with uh, with pennies When I did go through the original lot, I did find a, uh, what was that? It was a, a lamination error. And I 
chucked it back in with my ones that I'd already gone through and I couldn't find it again when I went back through again so at some stage I'd like to pull that lamination error coin out so yeah I like to make sure that we rotate each and every one of the coins and I'm obviously looking in the background to see if there's anything interesting going on to see if there's any more die clashes uh, it's not something I was aware of uh, with uh, with that particular penny this is probably a little bit of something going on there from a lamination point of view but it could be just post mint damage as well that um, it's a bit hard to tell yeah there's certainly these coins are in fairly good condition there's plenty of good detail through the hair that's all the high all the high spots on the coins are what you're wanting to check for detail and that'll really tell you what sort of condition the coins are in sometimes you will come across coins that are rotated so make sure you rotate each and every time it's actually a pretty cool coin too there's some sort of lamination error going on there and I like the uh, almost like rainbowy sort of color that's sort of going on there but yeah I don't know if that's special or not so yeah if you know anything about coins please leave a comment here's another 1943 but we can't see any sort of die clash on that one Oh, this might be a little clip. Yeah, I reckon that's a little clip there. So, basically one of the... Now, I'm pretty sure it's called the Blakesley effect. I'm pretty sure. So, when there's a clip on a coin, and you can see that we're missing some definition there and some detail, the opposite side of the coin, so say around here, should also be missing some detail um, there's probably a little bit of something going on there it certainly looks like it's being clipped based on what I can see here and what I remember knowing from that type of error so this could be a clipped penny so I'm going to keep this one aside as well so yeah let me know what you think about that one actually if you think that that is post mint damage or you think it's actual clip yeah that's pretty cool I think it is I hope it is anyway let me know I mean, it's only a very minor clip, but uh, it's the only clip I've got, if it is one. So you can tell a lot of these coins are all fairly, um, yeah, fairly, like, a lot later. So uh, not many in the 40s, a lot in the 50s and 60s. But the 46 is the one you want to find. 1956 is the uh, year of the Melbourne Olympics. Here's another 43. But couldn't see any die clash there. Yeah, because all of these coins are... Well, they're all kangaroo pennies. I sus suspected that Someone has obviously gone through these and possibly pulled out any low mintage coins, such as the 46. And so I, I thought that uh, there probably wouldn't be any error coins in here, but technically if that one is clipped, as I hope it is, and then we've got the 
the die clash well maybe these haven't gone been gone through as thoroughly as I would have thought so maybe there is hope that we can find a 46 in this lot I do have one 46 which I did find by going through some old pennies that's how I came across that one I didn't have to buy it Suggest that's post mint damage. That sort of circular motion there. Yeah, someone's certainly done something there. There on both sides would be my guess. But if you know anything different, let me know. I'm going to put it aside just in case someone says, "Oh no, that's something special." But I don't believe it is. And you always got to look out in these old coins. You you will find die cracks. That's probably not something I've been focusing on enough. But if uh, if you look well enough, you'll certainly see some die cracks. This is definitely post mint damage. Especially around the lettering is where you'll find die cracks. So if you zoom in sometimes and. Sometimes you don't need to. Oh, there's a lot in this bag still. Alright, well, we're definitely not going to get through all this. But if you let me know that uh, you'd like me to continue, I will uh, do another video where we just keep going through these coins and. Uh, I'll stop as soon as we stop and I won't continue for a few days and uh, yeah let me know if you'd like me to do a video I can certainly do that that's not a problem so I think we'll wrap this one up very shortly So for these 500 coins, I paid $100. Okay, so probably to be expected. This looks a bit different. Just the way that the two is. I'll need to do a little bit of research on that one. Just looks a bit different. Even the Australian, the penny. This has got a dot at the start and a dot at the end. But uh, I'm going to grab my my other book and we'll just have a quick little look at that. Just a moment. All right, guys. So I've got the book out. So 1942, there was two, two different kinds. So uh, we've got a Perth minted one and a B, which is Bombay. So in India. And then there's an I under the head, so there'd be 9 million of those, and the Y dot, which is 12 million. So this one here, well, it has a dot at the start and a dot at the end, so I'm not sure what that exactly is referring to, but it does have the I underneath the head, so if we zoom in there, we can see that. We can see the eye underneath King George's head. So that's definitely one from India. So a Bombay coin there. So I'll have to compare it to the uh, to the other 1942 penny that was print, um, minted in uh, Perth. Alright guys, I think we will leave it there for today. But yeah, let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to continue and make another video with uh, the remainder of these pennies. Be more than happy to do that if you're interested. 
Alright guys, thanks for watching and uh, we'll have another video for you soon.